Okay. What about those partial plates we can make? That's up there. Right? Rose and the note, gone but not forgotten. They said there's bodies? Two. Good break for us. Bad one for her, though. And the other one's her little girl. How little? Looks like her neck was broken. While she was sleeping. Hallway outside. Holly walked in on the killer doing mom. The killer put her in bed? No, her daddy said he did. What for? She was his little girl. In there. Hey, Nancy. Something, huh? Oh, it's unbelievable. Peter Lake. Doesn't look so tough outside the courtroom, does he? What do you suppose a place like this goes for? <sighs> You're a little sensitive for the job, don't you think? Mr. Lake? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here today. We know that you have a lot of concerns about how our project is going to affect your businesses. So here to address them and to answer all of your questions is Martin Darius. I want to live in your neighborhood, not take it away. But do I plan to be successful? Oh, yeah. And if I'm successful, so will you all be. I promise you. Darius Plaza will not change the face of the Frontier District. And I think even the most diehard among you will have to admit that the Frontier is not what it once was. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Russ, I'm gonna have to take this. Oh, no problem. I'll take over. So have you Martin Darius. Hello, Martin. Is my husband there? Mm-hmm. We're in a meeting. Oh, can you get out of it, Martin? Well, if it's an emergency, of course I'll be there. Oh, it's an emergency, all right. An extremely urgent one. You're going to have to see your trail all the way. Russ. All right, got another affair I've got to get to. You take over. Oh, yeah, of course. So, folks, please help yourselves some more champagne. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you've heard a lot of testimony. You've seen a lot of evidence. Andrea Hammermill is accused of the murder of her husband. Mr. Page, our illustrious district attorney, would have you believe that it was an act of cold-blooded, premeditated murder. But what we have to understand is that Andrea Hammermill is a woman who was in a fight for her life. After years of physical and mental abuse at the hands of her husband after years 
of living in fear that the next time he might kill her with his savage beatings. Beatings that resulted in her being hospitalized on two separate occasions. She took the only step that she knew would end her suffering and save her life. C112897, the state versus Andrea Hammermill, in the manner of the premeditated murder of her husband, Howard Hammermill, the jury finds the defendant not guilty. You okay? woman gave you a sympathy vote? The verdict shows that a person has a right to defend herself. You mean that murder's legal? Mrs. Hammermill lived in a private battlefield of abuse. She had to make a stand to save her life. Excuse me. Uh, Miss Tannenbaum, how does it feel to save an abused woman from prison? Pretty damn good. I am so proud of you, sweetheart. <laughs> thank you, Mom. Oh, thank you for coming here. Can I take you to lunch? Oh, please. All right. Are you disappointed in the verdict? Do you think a murderer went free? This office is always sympathetic to the plight of battered women. But we will always, always prosecute vigilanteism. If Andrea Hammermill had come to us before taking matters into her own hands, then her husband would be the one on trial today. Any leads in the disappearances of Laura Farrar and Wendy Reiser? One case at a time, please. This office is working very closely with police on that matter. We'll comment when we feel it's appropriate. Lots of legalese for we don't know Jack. I don't want your husband getting curious about where you are all these afternoons. Well, what if you found out, what would you do? Boy, I hate to fire him. Russ is doing such a great job. <laughs> oh, you're the devil. Uh, better luck next time. This pile is, uh, they shut off your cell phone. And, uh, these are signed by some guy named Guido. Look, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. Lawyers do actually get paid for the work they do. I just happen to represent people who are broke. Well, maybe you should represent some, uh, wealthier clients. Well, that's a good idea. Do you know any? Well, it pays to advertise. And yeah, that takes money. Besides, it's a good thing that we're able to use Jeff's office while he's gone. Otherwise, you and I would be working out of my apartment again. Well, all I'm saying is a little self-promotion doesn't hurt. Give me the list. I'll think about it. Vicky! Vicky! I'm home early. Where are you? Hey, Vic, you should have seen me today, babe. Darius gave me the football, and I ran with it. And I scored big time. You know, he totally trusts me. It's all happening just like I said it would. Huh. It's totally all happening. Why are all the lights on? Hey, Vicky.
state house to the courthouse. Our in-studio guest today is Betsy Tenenbaum, the Sacramento attorney who made headlines across the state and the nation with her successful defense in the notorious Hammer Mill case. Ms. Tannenbaum is a local single mother and a graduate of the UC system who is making quite a name for herself as a spousal abuse ace. Martin Darius, you want to meet me, Tidy's Fish Shack, in 20 minutes? <laughs> I don't think so. Wait, 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 wait. Don't hang up. If you hang up, I'll be gone but not forgotten. Catch my drift. Enjoy the rest of your freedom, Mr. Darius. What do you want? It's not what I want. It's what you want. It's always what you want. And right now, you want to meet me in 20 minutes. Tidy's Fish Shack. Thank you for coming, Mr. Darius. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. That I do. That I do. Calamari? Clogs your arteries. No one lives forever. That's true. But some live longer than others. Well, it's your loss. They make them good here. You cook them too long, they get rubbery. Sure. No, thanks. I know what you're doing in Sacramento. Well, congratulations, you watch television. I've been to Hunter's Point. Hunter's Point. Ring a bell? No, I can't say it does. Then how about this? face, Mr. Darius. I like that. Because the ante to stay in this game is a million dollars in cash. All hundreds, please. I can't raise that kind of money in cash. Okay, well, you got 24 hours to figure out how. And that is only because it's so late in the day now and because I'm a nice guy. How do I contact you? I'll contact you. I got your number. Is a wasted. Nice watch. Law office. Betsy Tannenbaum? Yes, Mr. Hoffman. Speaking. Martin Darius here. I'd like to meet with you. Soon, if possible. Of course, Mr. Darius. Yep. Rick. You're still at the office? Yeah, um, I need a favor. Uh huh, what's that? Would it be all right if I came to pick up Kathy a little bit late tonight? Something important just came up. More important than your own daughter? Our daughter. She has two parents. Really? I only see one of us here, Betsy. Rick, please do not make this difficult. Look, it's just 90 minutes, all right? 90 minutes to do what? Martin Darius just phoned me, and he wants to meet me on a legal matter tonight. So? If, if it was you, you would take the meeting, and I would understand. OK, fine. It made me the bad guy. Please, I will not be long, and I will make it up to you. OK. You go for it. I hope it goes well. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Betsy Tannenbaum? I'm Martin Darius. Oh, uh, yes. I'm sorry if I startled you. Your door was wide open. Oh, no problem. My nice place. Well, it's actually not mine. Yeah, I knew that. Uh-huh. Sound for me? Clock's ticking, Mr. Darius. Excellent. I'll get back to you. Curse of the 21st century. Would you like some coffee? Hi. Right. You great? I was at a charity affair for the Sacramento Opera the other night. You go? No, I haven't. Oh, it's too bad. They're really very good. Nope. Ah, uh, no, no thanks. I was talking with Maxine Silver. She's on the board. Uh, we were discussing the Greek book. You read it? A novel by the serial killer? Thank you. Uh, please sit down. No, I actually haven't. I've read some of the reviews. It's actually not my cup of tea. Maxine said 
The book never should have been published solely because Grieg wrote it. You agree? I wouldn't ban a book just because I disapproved of the person who wrote it. And if the publisher bowed to pressure from, say, woman's group and withdrew it from circulation, would you represent Grieg? Is there a point to these questions, or are you just making small talk? Go to Storm. My answer is yes. I could represent Greek. Really? I'd be representing a principal. Principals only get tested in extreme cases. I like you. I'd like to put you on retainer. <clears throat> I've taken the liberty of drawing you a check. Consider 5,000 of it to be your consultation fee for tonight. The rest is your retainer. I see you've placed the auto mount. It's my gross income last year. Forgive me for having you investigated. I'm a careful guy, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> Let's make it an even hundred thousand. What kind of trouble are you in, Mr. Darius? Absolutely none whatsoever. I hire the best people I can find, not because I need them immediately, but because it helps me control my future. Why me? I heard your interview on the radio. I like what you had to say. Now that I've met you, I like you even better. I'm going to have to think about your offer. I wouldn't expect anything else. SD, I need a reverse directory trace in the following number. Name and address. Hi. Hi. Look, I'm sorry. I'm... Me too. You're soaking wet. Yeah. Oh, hap. It's really raining outside. She's asleep. I'll go get her. Ready to run? Betsy. Why does this have to be so hard? I don't... I... I miss you. I do. I know you do. Why don't you just stay? I wish it were that easy. It is if you want it to be. I don't want to lose you.
You guys ever see Laura? Laura Ferrar? No, the movie Laura, this whole black and white thing about a cop who falls in love with a dead girl's picture. Ellen, you gotta get out more. She is beautiful. Hopefully she's not dead. Uh, she's got two chances of that. None and slim. We're just a golden ray of sunshine today. Laura lived. I thought you said she was dead. Three months, three women. This guy is not going to stop until we stop him. He's not giving us much. No prints. No forced entry, no sign of a struggle, no hair, no blood, nothing. Nothing? What about the notes? What about the roses? It's vague. He's trying to make us look bad. Well, it's working. What do these women have in common? They were all well-to-do. None had a job. None had children. And all of their husbands are in the clear. No ransom notes or any communication to any of the families? None. Are there any cults out there with these things as trademarks? Not in the database. I wish it were that easy. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Page. The DA? That's right. Can I help you? I may have some information about the women who are disappearing here in Sacramento. And you are? I'm Detective Nancy Gordon from the Hunters Point Police in upstate New York. We had the same thing happen to us ten years ago. Four women disappeared from their homes. Whoever was taking them was leaving behind a black rose and a note that said, gone but not forgotten. Number Sound familiar? Yes. Yes, it does. Can, can we... Please. You said Hunter's Point, New York? Yeah. We had a suspect named Peter Lake. He was the husband of one of the victims. His six-year-old daughter was killed, too. So why him and not some of the other husbands? Those women just disappeared. Here we had bodies. You said you had a suspect. What happened to him? Well, we had another suspect. A sex offender named Waters. One of the missing women was found in his basement, dead. Waters was killed resisting arrest. But you think it's Peter Lake? Immediately after the case was closed. Peter Lake gave his law practice to his partners, closed out all of his bank accounts, he abandoned his house, and disappeared. Well, you can't really blame him, can you? I mean, the man's wife and child are killed and he's accused of it. Two things. We never told to the press about the killings. The color of the roses the killer used, and what was in the notes. Only the people on the task force and the killer himself knew. Peter Lake leaves Hunter's Point, and the killings stop. He comes to Sacramento, and ten years later, you've got the same crime and the same signature. What, what do you mean, he comes to Sacramento? This is Peter Lake. This is Martin Darius. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. President. Well, my tax returns have been public record for 37 years now. Mr. President, I will do everything in my power to live up to this great responsibility. Thank you. I am truly honored and very grateful. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Well, that was the call. I am officially the nominee as the new justice of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Congratulations, Ray. You deserve it. I'm sure it'll go well. This is Washington, Wayne. Nothing goes well. So, what did the president say? He asked me if there was anything I had to disclose. Anything questionable. It might come out in the confirmation hearings and prevent me getting the post and embarrass him. And you said no. And I said no. Ray. 
There is no way anyone can know anything about Hunter's Point. That's why I said no. Good. Really appreciate you agreeing to the article. Has this newfound celebrity of yours impacted your life, your practice, or your private life in any way, positive or negative? Well, um, being a single mom, I can't imagine becoming any busier, but it definitely has impacted my practice positively. How so? I have more and bigger clients. Doesn't more and bigger translate to more and bigger criminals? Oh, that's not very objective. Andrea Hammermill is not a criminal. You know, you do seem to have a very special kind of relationship with your clients. Have you spoken to Hammer Mill since the verdict? Murder trials are not exactly something you want to reminisce about. Working on any special cases at the moment? No. No, or nothing you can talk about? Nothing I can talk about. So does this mean we might be seeing a little more of you on television in the near future? Well, let's hope not, because if you do, then that means one of my clients has had a foul of the law. Ah, that's a good point. You can get it done this afternoon. I think we got the votes. Excellent. So she just shows up out of nowhere. I think she was following me. So she just disappears into thin air. Spooky. Yeah. She tells me this whole story, but something doesn't feel right about what she said. And this Peter Light guy looks like Martin Darius. No, Randy, not like him. It is him. This is on page. This is Garrett Shunt, Chief of Police in Hunters Point, New York. Thanks for getting back to me, Chief. So you're looking for one of my detectives, Nancy Gordon. She was put on administrative leave, and we haven't heard from her since. When was that? Oh, about six months ago, I think. Why, uh, is she looking for work out there? No, she just showed up talking about a case there about ten years ago, a group of killings. The Black Rose thing. Could you send me the files on that case? I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Curious, sir, I'm curious. What? I was the chief of police in Hunter's Point. Nancy Gordon was a detective there, but she took a leave of absence about four months ago. They thought she had what amounted to battle fatigue. That's all they would say. She winds up here. She goes on leave four months ago? Three months ago, women started disappearing from Sacramento. You certainly have a suspicious mind. And you don't? We're prosecutors. Right here. Hey, Clyde, it's Alan Page. I need you to find a woman for me. Desperate, huh? Very funny. Did you get that stuff that I asked you about on Darius? They're in the machine. If you want, I'll no, go No, it's get. all right. It's fine. I can walk that far. You know what's strange? Uh, they just stop. What do you mean they just stop? The articles. There's nothing on them before 1996. It's like alien abduction, except in reverse. Tomorrow, I want you to keep looking. Excuse me. I got the flash report. Thanks. Walk with me. Martin Darius started a construction company eight years ago. Now, he's building everything. Charms people's weak spots, cons them into believing that they got the best deal for their property, when in actuality, he's buying them for peanuts, developing for a fortune. Buy low, sell high, welcome to America. Mm -hmm. yeah, hold on. Ellen Page? Yeah, wait, wait a second. All right, go. Got it, thanks. Got an address for Nancy Gordon. What's this all about, anyway? It's tying up a few loose ends, sir. Nothing to be concerned about. Well, I know everything that goes on at this place, sir. I wasn't here when she checked in. But nobody's come in or out of here. Did you open it, please? Thank you, sir. We'll take it from here. The bags are still here. The bed's made. She bothered to hang her clothes up, so she must have been planning on staying a while. What is this? What do you think? She into the guy or what? Man. Doing a girl like this in high school. No matter where I went, there she was. Totally used to creep me out. 
What'd you do about it? And the other couple of times at her parents' house when they're out of town. You what? I was 16. You take what you can get. You're a dangerous man, Randy. Yeah. What you got? You got a pencil? Who uses a pencil anymore? Wait a minute. Here's one. You're not telling me that actually works. Old school, baby. Feel like taking a ride? Why would Nancy Gordon come to a Darius construction site? Let's take a look around. What exactly is it you think we're looking for? Maybe something like this? Let's see how far it goes. <clears throat> We're uh, trespassing. Look, Nancy Gordon could be in here. If she's alive, she's in trouble. We have cause and we have moment. And we don't have a court order. And I'm the DA and it's all my decision. And let's just say you're not even here. This could be something. Try not to step in the tire tracks. Look, they end right here. You want me to call the cops? For what? So far, all we've seen is a pit in a construction site. Shine your light on me so I can see where I'm stepping. You all right? I'm fine. I did that on purpose. Cops. Call the cops! Now! ID. It's them. Three missing women. Barrar, Riser, and Miller. None of them is Nancy Gordon? No. None of them is Nancy Gordon. Any idea how long they've been here? Not yet. The way it looks, another few days. This pit would have been poured in concrete for the foundation of this place. The rain must have held them up. This is Darius' project. I think he knows the poor schedule? The techs are gonna do a match on the tire treads, see what kind they are. This is going to be all over the news pretty soon if it isn't already. If it is Darius, he's going to run. We don't have enough to hold him. We do if we can find Nancy Gordon.
Yes, can I help you? Is Mr. Darius home? No, he's not. Excuse me, I'm Betsy Tannenbaum. I'm one of Mr. Darius's attorneys. I see. Well, uh, I'm Martin's wife. Can I help you with anything? Will you be expecting him? Yes, uh, Martin should be back shortly. Would you like to uh, wait inside? That'd be great. Thank you. God knows I could use the company. Well, it's an interesting house. Can I offer you a drink? Some water would be nice. How did you meet your husband? Business school. I was getting my MBA and uh, Martin was a guest lecturer. So do you work with your husband? No. My husband doesn't want me anywhere near his business. He likes me to stay right here. Says he doesn't want me painted. Cheers. So tell me, what's so uh, hot about corporate law? Nothing. I can't imagine anything more boring. Really? Then why did you get into it? Uh, the money? I'm not in corporate law. I'm a criminal defense attorney. Criminal? Why would Martin need a criminal defense attorney? He hasn't done anything. Well, if I knew that, uh, I couldn't tell you anyway. Martin won't be back for quite some time. I'll show you out. So you're telling me the techs found nothing in that motel room? Nothing? We did it twice. Nothing. It's a motel room. Do you have any idea how many hairs we pulled out of there? Well, she's officially a missing person. Consider the report filed by me. You need someone to file? I gotta go. I got another call. Find her, Clyde. Will you Find something. Alan Page. Hey, this is Officer Eric. Yeah, the chief told me to pull the files on that Black Rose murder case. Great. Thanks. How soon can we get them shipped? Well, there's a little problem. What kind of problem? Well, actually, it's a they're not here kind of problem. Not there? Where are they? I don't know. They were cataloged as being here. No one's listed as having checked them out. Is there a copy anywhere? Well, they weren't making backups ten years ago. This would be the only place where the information would be. There's nothing here. I'm sorry. All right, listen. Uh, this is really important. This is beyond important. I need you to keep looking for me and let me know if something turns up. I'm telling you, there's nothing here. Please, just keep looking. Thank you. Something to drink? No, I'm I'm good, thank you. Chamomile tea. Great. Okay. So, did you have a good day with your dad? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking with Martin Darius, CEO of Darius Construction, who made that hefty donation to the public library. Three million dollars is a very generous donation. Well, it's for a good cause. Well, arguably, though, there are a lot of good causes out there. Why the public library? Yeah, you're right. There are a lot of good causes out there, and reading is really crucial. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't have much of anything, and I spent a lot of my time reading in a public library. Whatever success I had today is due in large part to that experience. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Darius. Dale and Christina, back Let me see, honey. This is you, this is Daddy, and this is me in the middle, and we're all in the same house. Oh, that's beautiful, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great house, Kathy. find you among the living. Now I'm wondering if I should have you arrested. Who do you want answering questions, me or my attorney?
The women began disappearing in February. First it was um, Samantha Reardon, then Patricia Cross, Gloria Escalante, and uh, Anne Hazelton. I mean, they vanished without a trace. No clues except for the roses and the notes. Blake's wife and daughter were killed in October. When a wife is murdered, where do you look first? The husband. Right. Only this was different. I mean, this killer left his calling card. Which meant that if, uh, if Blake had killed his family, he was probably good for the other women as well. <laughs> Still, I didn't believe it was him at first. Why not? I just didn't. Mr. Lake? Well, we have to give O'Malley something. Like what? You got any suggestions? We've been over and over this. We haven't even had lunch yet. Want to see you about lunch? I'm hungry. I'll tell you who's ever doing this is a genius. I mean, kidnap and kill these many women? This clean? Wait a second. This guy's singer? The neighbor that's a CPA? What about him? Yeah, right here. He says he saw Peter Lake come home at 720. 720? 911 call came in at 815. Mm -hmm. And in the call, he said he just found the bodies. Yeah, so what was he doing for an hour? Killing his wife and daughter. <laughs> How could a man break his own daughter's neck? Frank, Peter Lake is on his way back to see you right now. We're leaving right now. No, wait a minute. It's not enough. It's not evidence. I mean, he comes home, he finds the bodies, he, he, he's overcome. He doesn't make the call for an hour. Who's not to say? You're right. Even though we have opportunity, we still need motive. The wife found out something. But what? And what about the little girl? I mean, why did she have to die? Maybe the little girl saw something and didn't know what it was and told Mom. Or she sees Daddy kill Mommy. So he has to kill her, too. Yeah, but we still have no link to the other murders, the other women. Figured you guys would be here. Hey, Peter. We're just uh, going through the victim's files to see if anything doesn't fit. You find anything? Yeah, nothing much. No, I just uh, thought I'd let you know that I told the chief I thought that guy at Waters would be someone to watch. So who was Waters? He was a flower delivery guy who, uh, who had a history of indecent exposure. Why not him? He didn't fit the profile. Just tell us what happened that night. Was she cute? Hmm. I just wanted to show it to her. That's all. So what made you do it? She didn't think I could. What? She, she dared you to do it. Oh, she dared me, all right. You know, what'd she say? She didn't have to say a thing. They have their ways of letting you know what they think. So actually, the woman never spoke to you. No, she wanted what they all want. All? All of them? You mean women? <laughs> you girls? You can talk to me, Henry. Same. All of them. What are they thinking? That I can't, you know, be with them? I can. Anytime I want. What about this guy, Waters? Waters, the florist delivery guy? What about him? Those women would have let him into their homes, okay? I mean, if he was delivering a big bouquet of flowers, they would have let him in. That's access. And he has a history of sex crimes. Waters was only seen at one of the crime sites. There's no other evidence linking him to any of the other victims. And his history of sex crimes comes down to one questionable incident of flashing. I just got a feeling about it. He can put the women in his delivery truck to drive them away. I mean, who looked there? He works for a florist. He can get black roses easily. He's a florist delivery man. And he leaves behind his calling card a black rose. I mean, it fits, right? No, because nothing else about him fits. He lives with his sick grandfather. He, he's a high school dropout. Enjoy, Jack. Are you going to be OK? 
okay? Yeah. Girl, thanks, Nancy. <laughs> it's nothing. I shined it on at first, but there was no doubt what he wanted. Yes, granted, it looks bad, but... Well, there was more. Turner found the link between Peter Lake and all of the other women. And Hazelton belonged to the same country club. Cross's husband's law firm did overspill work for Lake's law firm. Escalante and her husband organized a charity golf tournament for Sandra and Peter Lake. And Reardon and her husband were on the Hunters Point Preservation Committee with Peter Lake. It was way beyond coincidence. Unbelievable. Yeah. How did you nail the other guy for it? We got an anonymous tip. Somebody called and said that they'd overheard Waters bragging that he was uh, holding a, a woman in his basement. We had to check it out. First player ever with three consecutive 100 yard games. What? Henry Waters? I'm Detective Gordon from the Hunters Point Police. This is Detective Turner and Officer Smith and Mayhew. May we come in? Hey, what for? I, I check in with Wheeler. I saw her last Wednesday. I gave her sample and everything. You can ask her. This isn't about your parole, Henry. Then what? Just step aside. I, I didn't do anything. I never... in. Otherwise, I'm going to have Officer May you cuff you and you're going to be held in violation of your parole. Oh, come on. Pressuring. Come on, just deal with him. Which way is your basement, Henry? Why don't you stay here and wait? down here. It's not what we're here for. Body, the dead perp, the 
killer's signature, all wrapped up in a nice little bundle. Waters took the fall, and we all knew who was behind it. Five Lincoln requested Sam 57, quarter of 7, 6, MTA involving four vehicles. So it was Waters after all. The chief's holding a press conference. We may never find the bodies of the other women. <laughs> well, you must be happy. The man who killed your wife and daughter is dead? Mm. I'm satisfied. Yeah, everyone's satisfied. <laughs> but I'm not. I know it's you. I know who you are. And I'm gonna get you. We've got to have dinner. You know, for old time's sake. The case was officially closed. I never saw Peter Lake again. Will you testify to this in court? I like him more. No, honey, that's not true. No, I just work for Mr. Darius. What kind of work? Well, actually, I haven't done anything for him yet. I just promised him that I would help him if he needed my help. And your daddy can be very silly sometimes. <laughs> Police are here in my home, <clears throat> and they have a warrant. I like your furniture. Yeah. I don't know. Put the officer in charge on the phone. Sorry. It's for you. Next Barrow. I'm Betsy Tannenbaum. I'm Martin Darius' attorney. Until I can verify that the search warrant that you have is in proper order and for just cause, any evidence that you collect will be subject to a motion for inadmissibility. And just when are you planning on verifying this warrant? I'm on my way. Everything taken for examination or marked as evidence. You're making a huge mistake. They have a legal search warrant. We can't stop them unless you want to be charged with obstruction of justice. Excuse me. Sorry, thank you. You knew this was going to happen, didn't you? No, I didn't. Really? Then why did you come over here the other day? To speak to your husband. Which I haven't had a chance to do yet. What is this all about? Why are the police searching our home? I don't have any idea. I really don't. Over here. All right. We 
you have a positive match on the tire tread of the BMW in your garage to that found at a murder site, Mr. Darius. What? Martin Darius, I'm placing you under arrest for the murders of Wendy Reiser, Laura Farrar, and Vicki Miller. You have the right to remain silent. Murder? You have the right to an attorney. We're gonna handcuff you now, Mr. Darius. Standard procedure. Come on. Nobody touches me. You are not gonna handcuff me. <sighs> yes, we are. One way or another, we are. They're within legal bounds to handcuff you, Martin. You must do it. Otherwise, you'll be charged with resisting arrest. Just go with them. Don't say a word. I'll call the district attorney and find out what this is all about. Get me a bail hearing right away. I wouldn't go down to the jail till tomorrow morning. Probably take us all day to book him in. We want to make sure we do everything to your satisfaction, Counselor. Murder? Martin, what are they talking about? It's all wrong. Don't worry, Lise. I'll be on a day. Don't count on it. I am counting on it. Yeah. We're searching the rest of your house now, Mrs. Darius. I'm going to need the keys for that Humvee for impound. And don't worry, we'll give you a receipt for everything. Why is this happening? Well, as soon as I know, I will tell you, I promise. I can't believe this. If there is something that you know about the charges against your husband, it would help everyone if you told me. Are you kidding? I don't know anything about this. I had to ask. Look, I need you to go away for a while. Is there some place you can stay? Yeah, um, my dad's house. All right, now go pack a bag and leave quickly. I'll stay here until they finish the search. Talk. I was just on my way to see you. We definitely do need to talk. I'll meet you by the stairs. All right. Mr. Page. Betsy, please call me Alan. We are colleagues. Alan, my client was just taken away in handcuffs. What are the basis of these charges? When did you hook up with Martin Darius? After the hammer mill case. He wanted to align himself with someone that had a good track record against the DA. One or no isn't exactly dominance, Counselor. Well, it's better than no and one. What have you got? Your client is facing three counts of murder, one with special circumstances, each one carrying the death penalty. You're joking. I don't have that particular skill set. Martin Darius. Let's step outside. Why do you think it's Martin Darius? Ten years ago, a group of similar crimes took place in upstate New York, some town called Hunter's Point. There was a suspect named Peter Lake involved. Again, what does this have to do with Darius? I've had contact with the detective on that other case. Her name is Nancy Gordon. She had proof that Peter Lake and Martin Darius are the same man. Proof? What proof? A photograph of Peter Lake. He killed six people in Hunter's Point, two of them his own wife and daughter. Three more here makes nine. I know combat vets were less on their conscience. The point is, the signatures in each of the victims' initial disappearances, both here and there, identical. That's why we arrested your client. Signatures. When each of the women here disappeared, whoever took them left something behind. A black rose and a card which read, gone but not forgotten, exactly like in Hunter's Point. Well, if this Nancy Gordon has prima facie evidence that Peter Lake killed the women in Hunter's Point, why isn't he behind bars? Someone else took the fall for it. Nancy Gordon believes that Peter Lake set him up. Win or lose, Betsy, this case will hurt you. Walk away from it. Well, thank you very much for the advice, Alan. But I still believe that everyone is innocent until proved guilty. We both know otherwise. Some people are guilty whether it's proved or not. Powerful people get away with murder all the time. And some people are brought to trial who are wrongly accused. Betsy, I have put away tons of vile individuals in my career. This man is worse than any of them. Believe me, I've got a sense for it. You've got a sense for it? Then why don't you lock him up and throw away the key? I guess we'll be glaring at each other from across the aisle again. If I'm glaring, it's definitely not at you. Let me show you something. These are the three women that we pulled out of a pit yesterday at one of your client's construction sites. But they don't convict my client. Oh, and 
you're also right about Martin Darius. He is powerful. If you take a swing at him, don't miss. Yes, I am Peter Lake, or I was. Ten years ago, in Hunter's Point, my wife and my daughter were murdered by a man, a, a sex offender named Waters. He killed some other women, too. They found one of them in his basement. I, I know all about it. What happened to Waters? He's dead. He was shot resisting arrest. Well, that excludes him from being a suspect in this case, doesn't it? Yeah. But not you. I've been in Sacramento for 10 years. If I'm the killer, what have I been doing for the last 10 years? And besides, am I the only person here who knows about Hunter's point? Nancy Gordon? You're saying that she murdered those women? And she's framing you? Why? Ten years ago, while the investigation was dragging on, Nancy Gordon and I had an affair. It started out innocently enough. She was working on the case, so we obviously spent a great deal of time together and we became friends. She was easy to talk to. She made me smile again. It soon evolved into something more. She gave me the comfort that I needed. I was alone, lost. There was no excuse for what I did. It was wrong in so many ways. We met a few times. I broke it off. She wanted to keep it going. I told her I just couldn't. She's framing you for murder because you ended the affair? I have no idea what she's capable of. After I broke it off, she refused to accept it was over. Call the police. No, I thought I could handle it myself. No, it's not Nancy. Nancy, it's not, Nancy, it's not gonna work out. No, no, stop it. Just stop it. No! Leave me alone. No, I'm not gonna leave you alone. Peter! circumstances I don't think anyone can blame me for leaving changing my name trying to get away 10 years 3,000 miles and she's still pursuing you you have to ask her about that I have to think about representing you Mr. Darius if I don't rest assured I'll return the retainer Betsy let me tell you why you're gonna defend me This case is going to make you a national figure. It'll make your last case look like a speeding ticket. Why? Because it's me, because there are multiple victims, but mainly and most importantly, because I'm innocent. I could get other representation easily. I want you. I did not kill these women. Would you be willing to take a lie detector test? birth date January 26th yes is your name Martin Darius no do you live at 1212 Sunrise Way yes have you recently donated money to the public library yes do you have anything to do with the missing women in Sacramento no did you kill Wendy Riser no 
you a registered voter? No. Did you abduct Laura Farrar? No. Do you own pornography? No. Do you drive a Ferrari? Yes. It's still my turn. From now on, our conversations are privileged. What's our next move? I start spending your money. And following his meeting with foreign dignitaries, the president is expected to spend the weekend at Camp David. Meanwhile, the confirmation hearing for Senator Raymond Colby continued today on Capitol Hill. Senator Colby is widely considered to be in a strong position with little political opposition. Many, in fact, consider the debates to be merely a formality. Now turning to local news, over 200 people gathered today to oppose the construction of a new shopping mall on West Wind Boulevard. A spokesman for Darius Construction declined to comment on the controversy. It can't be T-Bomb. It is me. In the flesh. Yeah, well, more like flannel. Ah, I leave messages and, you know, call me back. See, no, I, I, I don't call back because I know what that's like. I mean, you know, you're already into me for like two jobs and I don't want it to be about that. You know, I don't want it to be about the M-O-N-E-Y. See, now look, there it is. You made me bring it up and I'm already feeling bad. Look at that. Well, don't feel bad because I've got your payment. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, it's not that I'm eager or anything, you understand? Payment in full, in tens and twenties, like you like it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's too heavy. Part of it's interest. And part of it is advanced payment on the next one. Uh, advance... for what? I want you to dig up all the dirt you can on Martin Darius. I hope to God you're suing him. I'm defending him. Murder trial. So here's the number for Darius's construction form, and this is the service that washes his car. Wow, that was fast. I know. Well, you're being so efficient today. I need a hard copy file on any of the archival news items that you can find on a series of murders done in a place called Hunter's Point, New York, 1994 and 1996, thereabouts. 94, 96, okay, I can do that. Uh, is there anything else? Yes, there is. Uh, find out what you can pull up on A, Black Roses, or B, the phrase, gone but not forgotten. Okay, I'll go look that up on the internet. Okay. Um, Dr. Keene's outside waiting for you. Oh, good, I'll be right there. Dr. Keene, thank you so much for stopping by. What can I do for you? Well, I was hoping that you still had some of your contacts at the coroner's office. For some reason, coroners don't make many new friends. We tend to stick together. I need the autopsies on the bodies that were found at the Darius construction site. Do you want the county's report, or do you want more? The county doesn't give much money for an autopsy these days. Budget cutbacks. What do you mean? I'm sure their work could be more complete if they had more time and money. Well, we've got money if it'll get us information. This is a situation where money can make the dead talk. How much do you think it'll take to get him to testify under oath? There are limits. <laughs> How long before you can get me something? Not long. I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Tenenbaum. Lisa. I really need to speak to you. Is everything okay at your father's? Never better. He's delighted that my husband's been accused of uh, being a serial killer. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, I was uh, wondering, how long have you represented my husband? Just under a week. Doesn't that make you a bit uncomfortable? Why? 
Well, he hired you only a few days ago, and now suddenly he's arrested for murder. Well, the thought did cross my mind, but I think like anyone else, he's entitled to the benefit of the doubt. Why? What do you know about him? Nothing more than his public persona. Mind? Actually, it's a non-smoking office. Sorry. Um, that's why you came by the other day, isn't it, to the house? You were curious. Can I help you with something, Lisa? I don't know where he goes sometimes. It's been happening a lot this summer. And when I try to ask, he just gets cold and distant. So I've hired a private investigator. I have to know. Okay. His name is Oberhurst. The strange thing is, he hasn't called me in weeks. I leave messages and he doesn't call me back. So I'm thinking Martin may have found out and, and paid him off. I wanted to give that to you. Maybe he can tell you something. I'll look into it. Thank you. Creepy, Reggie. Now, what'd you find out about Darius? Our little Martin does not play well with others. Once he's targeted an area, he buys up the property under market value. Then he undermines all the mom and pop shops, you know, raises the rent, hits them with code violations, rezones, whatever, to, de to degrade the neighborhood. Then he appears like some sort of guardian angel, starts a big project, hypes the value, and sells before the construction is finished, thereby reaping all of the rewards and passing on all of the headaches. Okay, we know he's not an angel. The question is, has he done anything that would make anyone hate him enough to want to frame him for murder? T-Bomb, in general, in my experience, framing is something that doesn't really happen in real life. If someone is pissed off enough that they want revenge, they usually bypass the middleman, and bingo, they go straight to the source. So they usually wind up in jail. That depends on who's defending them. Look, all we have now is one possible candidate who could possibly hate him enough to want to frame him for murder. Nancy Gordon. The prosecution's star witness. Alan, there's a problem. What? What is it? She's gone. Gone? Who's gone? Nancy Gordon, you asked me to swing by and check on her. I knocked on her door. I talked to the manager. He said she checked out. What? Fellas, what's up? Nancy Gordon's in the wind. You're kidding. You sure? Yeah, without a trace. Not even the black rose and the note. But she's half our case. I know that, Randy. And I don't need you looking at me like that. Like what? Like you advised me not to arrest Darius until I had more than a few tire tracks for evidence. You're the DA, right? Yeah, Nancy Gordon told me the same thing. What are we gonna do? Find her, Clyde, all right? Find her.
Stay tuned. Next on True Entertainment. Gone but not forgotten. Alternatively on True Movies 1, Runaway Father. And on True Movies 2, A Walton's Easter. I'm conflicted, Counselor. About what? Seeing you here. This guy shouldn't be on the street. No, if he shouldn't be, he won't be. It's that simple. Nothing's that simple. He says he's innocent. A lie detector says he's innocent. I happen to believe them both. There's no arguing with you, is there? Not unless there's a judge present. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning, Counselor. Morning, Martin. Did you get some rest? Slept like a baby. You know what they had? I'll soon see. No luck. Nancy Gordon.
Without being overly technical, how would you characterize the conditions of the victims' bodies? They appear to have been tortured. Tortured? How? By burning and lacerations. Was there anything similar about the manner in which all three of the women disappeared from their homes? In each case, there was no sign of forcible entry. And what does this usually indicate to you, Detective? Well, that the victims and the killer probably knew each other, and that he gained access through voluntary action on the part of the victims. Objection. The witness is stating that the victim's killer and abductor are, in fact, the same individual. This has not been established. Detective, would you like to rephrase? The victims probably knew their abductor. Detective Barrow, have you been able to establish a connection between the victims and Martin Darius? Well, they all had some connection to him. One belonged to the same country club, and two of the women had husbands who were his business associates. Do you find that unusual? Oh, I find that a remarkable coincidence. Objection. Witness is stating his opinion. I'll withdraw the question. Detective, aside from the lack of forced entry, uh, were there any other similarities about each of the three homes from where the victims disappeared? In each case, there was a black rose left behind and a note which said, gone but not forgotten. Are these the roses and the notes found at the crime scene? Yeah, they are. I'd like to enter these as evidence at this time, Your Honor. Moving on. Now, the site where the victims were discovered, was there something found there that led you to connect Martin Darius to these crimes? The tire track found at the site where the victims were discovered that matches exactly the tire track of a 740i BMW registered to Martin Darius. How can you be sure? Microscopic analysis. Every tire has small imperfections that make it unique. There's no question to the findings that that car was at the site. Could it have been used to transport the bodies there? Well, certainly large enough. Was there any other evidence found in the car connected to the transporting of the bodies? No, but it had been very recently cleaned and vacuumed and detailed. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> Ms. Tannenbaum? Detective Barrow, the site where the bodies were found was a Darius construction project. Is it not? Yeah, that's true. Do you find it unnatural that Mr. Darius's car would have been at a Darius construction project? No, I suppose not. In fact, considering that the site was in its preliminary stages, it's probable that Martin Darius would have driven there on various occasions in connection with his supervision of the entire project. Is it true? He could have. Yes, he very well could have. And there was no evidence of any of the bodies found in Martin Darius's car, correct? Yeah, correct. No blood, no hair. No skin samples. We haven't found any yet. And yet you portray the bodies of the victims and the photos from the scene depict the victims as being quite bloody and mutilated. They were, yeah. So how is it possible that not even a single microscopic piece of evidence was found in Martin Darius' car? As I said before, the car had been very recently cleaned, vacuumed, and detailed. So you're saying that a regular commercial cleaning of the vehicle would have destroyed every single piece of evidence of bodies so mutilated, every microscopic trace. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it possible that no evidence was found in Martin Darius's car because he did not transport the bodies in it? Is it possible, detective? It's possible. No further questions. Mr. Shortridge, where did you take this picture? At the motel where I work as day manager. That's the Hacienda Motel? Yes, that's the one. Why did you take it? Well, that kind of red Ferrari is my car. I mean, it's the kind I've always wanted, so... I figured I'd keep a camera at the desk and take a picture if he ever came back. So you'd seen this car at your motel before? Yeah, a few times. Why did you take this next photograph? Uh, uh, the auto wine got stuck, you know, and it kept on shooting. It's not like I was snooping or nothing like that. Mr. Shortridge, do you recognize this woman? Good-looking woman like that? Heck yeah. <laughs> She would always rent the room. She always paid cash, too. So there was more than one occasion? Yes, she'd meet the man in the red Ferrari. That man right there. Let the record show that Mr. Shortridge has identified Vicki Miller, one of the three victims removed from the Darius construction project. Objection! The identity of the woman in the photo has not been established. My next witness will do just that if you don't care to stipulate at this time, Counselor. Objection withdrawn. Thank you, Mr. Shortridge. No more questions. Your witness, Mr. Anderma. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? May I have a few moments to meet privately with my client, perhaps in the jury room? 
This court stands in recess. We'll reconvene in 15 minutes. Do you realize how easy it is for the prosecution to establish motive that you killed Vicki Miller to keep her quiet about the affair? I can't have surprises in the courtroom, Martin. And I can't defend you unless I know everything. I'm telling you the truth. I am not guilty of any of these charges. It's a setup. If Nancy Gordon is here, she's probably the one doing it. I'm going to ask you a simple question, Martin. I want a simple answer. Did you have a relationship with any of the other murdered women that I need to know about? Sacramento is a very small town. At least my part of it is. Yeah, I knew all of these women socially. Nothing more. I had an affair with Vicki Miller. Just Vicki Miller. And Nancy Gordon. She's not one of the victims. That's why you hired me, isn't it? You knew it would look good if your attorney was a woman with a reputation for women's rights. Gives you instant credibility with the jury. It looks very good for me to have someone with your reputation on my side. Of course it does. I always make the right moves. And what about Peter Lake? Him too. Mr. Shortridge, did you ever see Mr. Darius harm Vicki Miller in any way? No, I only heard stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, you know, sexual stuff. When I was walking by the door, she was pretty loud. So, what you're saying is that they would come to your motel, have their rendezvous, and leave, no problem. Is that correct? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Witness by step down. What else, Mr. Page? I have a request, Your Honor. I wish to take the stand myself. Objection. It's highly irregular, Counselor. Your Honor, a woman named Nancy Gordon came to my apartment a few days ago. She works as a detective for the town of Hunters Point in New York State. She told me about a group of killings that took place there, identical to the ones that Martin Darius is charged with here. At what point are you making? This is a picture of a man by the name of Peter Lake. Nancy Gordon was sure that he was a Hunter's Point murderer, but he got away. As you can see, Your Honor, they are clearly the same man. Nancy Gordon believes that he is killing women here just like he did in Hunter's Point ten years ago. So why isn't she here on the stand telling me this? Because she's disappeared, Your Honor. She told me her story in my apartment, went to her motel, and soon after that, she vanished. We're looking for her, but we think that she was abducted so that her testimony would not be heard. And you've obtained the files of this uh, Hunter's Point case? I'm afraid that they've disappeared as well. And what would your testimony accomplish? It would get on record everything that Nancy Gordon told me about the Hunter's Point case and why only someone with intimate knowledge of that case could accomplish the crimes here in Sacramento. Objection, Your Honor. Everything that Mr. Page would introduce to the record would be, by definition, hearsay. Granted, it would be unusual testimony, Your Honor, but this is simply a bail hearing, and therefore the rules are more flexible. Flexible, not disposable. Objection sustained. Can't allow your testimony, Mr. Page. Is there any other evidence that you in intend to introduce? Uh, anything more direct? Not at this time, Your Honor. Right, the court will then set bail for Mr. Darius. Bail is set at $1 million. Mr. Darius, you are not to leave the city. An electronic tracking device will be administered to you. Any attempt to remove that device will result in immediate revocation of your privileges. Thank you, Your Honor. Is it true that torture was involved in the deaths of these women? What is the significance of the Black Rose and the phrase, gone but not forgotten? And with your record on women's rights, why would you defend such a man? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this once. My client, Martin Darius, is innocent of killing these women. It is the constitutional imperative of the prosecution to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I suggest that you question Mr. Page on how he intends on doing that. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Page. Mr. Page. Hey, Betsy, you did great in there. What? Most of your objections were sustained. You knocked that DA back a peg or two. That's good, right? If you call holding my client for a million dollars bail, good. Well, you got to admit, he does seem pretty guilty. It's for a court of law to decide. This is your idea of an objective interview, Norm. Maybe we should reconsider. No, uh, you're right. I was letting it get personal. Excuse me. Won't happen again. You all right? I've been waiting to talk to you. 
Can we take a walk? Absolutely. Come on. I can't participate in this trial any longer. I know what you just saw and heard it was very difficult. For difficult? You. you don't know what difficult is. I'm sure you're right. But I need you. Martin needs you while he's on trial for his life. Sacrificed enough for him. I know you're upset. It's an understatement. Look, this is a very high-profile case, and perception is everything. If you're so concerned about how Martin is being perceived, believe me, you don't want me in that courtroom. It would be beneficial to have you there, possibly even to testify. Testify to what? To your belief that he's incapable of murdering those women. I can't do that. Why not? Tell me. The more I know, the more I can help. It's too late. I can't help you, and you can't help me. Let me be the judge of that. Martin raped me two years ago. Came out of nowhere. I never saw that side of him before. Never dreamed that he was capable. We came home one night from a benefit, and I wasn't feeling well. Martin knew that, but he wanted to make love, and he was not going to take no for an answer. <laughs> Martin, baby, I'm not in the mood tonight. But I did promise myself that if he ever violated me or disrespected me again in any way, that I would leave him. So you tell me, if I should get on that stand and I expose all of this, am I going to help him or hurt him? Hello? Mike, it's Martin. She's not here, Martin. Just put her on, please. She doesn't want to talk to you. It's urgent that I speak with her, Mike. Maybe you should have spoken with her before you started cheating on her. Let me talk to him, Dad. I want a divorce. Baby, listen to me. You have to leave Sacramento. No. It's you that has to leave. Lisa. I think you're in danger. Yeah, from you. You're the one who's hurt me, and you're not going to get to do that anymore. Do you understand? I'm not guilty of these crimes, baby. Somebody's trying to hurt me, and I'm afraid they're going to try to hurt you, too. You're such a liar! What do you think I am, some kind of fool? I know who you are, Martin. Do you hear me? I know who you are!
sleeping. Tell you one thing. I believe she's not going back to him, that's for sure. Well, what about the rape and all the other stuff? He's not on trial for raping his wife. I gotta say, our client sucks. <laughs> Welcome to the world of criminal law. Oh, speaking of which, you were right about Overhurst. The picture I'm getting ain't Norman Rockwell. What? You think he's framing Darius? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, but there's no profit in that. Well, unless somebody's paying him. The wife? No. That would mean that he would have to know about the black roses, the notes, everything at Hunter's Point. Well, what's so impossible? He investigates the guy, he finds out that he has no past, or rather that he does. He goes there and he finds out about Peter Lake. You're saying he's guilty? He passed the lie detector test. A lie detector can be beat and simpler than that. Maybe his wife set him up. And why would she tell me about Oberhurst? To make Darius look bad and to get you to quit. We are forgetting about our primary suspect. Nancy Gordon, all right, so maybe she's telling the truth and our client is Satan. All right, enough. I'm going around in circles here. I need you to find me Oberhurst. He's the key to this, I'm telling you. All right. And you, get me that hard copy on Hunter's Point now. Okay. Any word on Nancy Gordon? Nothing. Not. You check with Clyde? Only every half hour. Listen, I need you to be as, as obsessed as I am with this woman, understand? Obsessed. Got it. Travel agency. Hi, I need to uh, book a flight to Albany, New York. There were survivors in Hunter's Point? That's what it says. Alan Page, in court, said they were murdered. He lied? No, he wouldn't lie in court. Maybe Nancy Gordon lied to him. Well, why would she withhold information? Well, if she's trying to frame him, it makes for a stronger case if those women were killed. But why wouldn't Darius tell you? Maybe they found them after he left town. That's it? Yeah. A series of sick killings and this is all you got? Yeah, that's it. I'm going to Hunter's Point. Can I uh, borrow your phone? Just uh, a mistake. Can I help you, ma'am? I'm here to see Frank Grimsbo. Sure, I remember the case. Who wouldn't? I doubt if I can tell you anything you don't already know. Mr. Grimsbo, I had to change planes twice to get here. Could you humor me and go through the exercise? Oh, what time's that lunch? That soon? A flasher named Waters decided he uh, liked to do more than wave it around. We found one of his victims in his basement. And you're sure it was him? It was his basement. I heard Peter Lake was a suspect. We gave him a look. Were you satisfied with that look? I closed the case, didn't I? Oh, what about the other women? What about them? They survived, isn't that correct? That is correct. Did any of them identify Waters or any other suspect? I don't think so. You don't know? I wasn't there when they found him. But I thought it was your case. Not after I closed it. So who found the bodies? Another detective, Nancy Gordon. How did she know where to look? You'll have to ask her. Well, I would love to do that. Have you spoken to her lately? Are you kidding? I barely spoke to her back then. But you were present when Waters was killed. Shortly after the fact, yeah. After? So you don't know if he said anything before he died? 
You know, I think maybe he did. What did he say? I believe it was. Thanks a lot for your cooperation. Anything you need, feel free to ask. Oh, I do just have one last question. How does a regular plain-closed cop get to be senior vice president of security at a place like this just years after leaving the force? It helps to be at the right place at the right time. Of course, a person could find herself at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mr. Grimsbo, if I didn't know you better, I'd say that was a threat. Simply words to live by, Counselor. What about Nivers? Nivers. You got him. You have all the votes you need for confirmation, Senator. You're going to be the next Supreme Court Justice. Excuse me, Senator. Frank Grimsbo is on line two for you, Mr. Turner. He said he'd want to take it. Grimsbo? Yeah. Hey, Frank. It's been a long time. Hey, Wayne. Uh, just had a visit from a defense attorney from uh, Sacramento, California. Smelling around about the Hunter's Point. What about Hunter's Point? You know. Frank, it's Ray Colby. Senator? What was this attorney's name? Elizabeth Tannenbaum. Did you tell her anything? You think I'm stupid, sir? All right. Good man. Thanks, Frank. What do you want to do? So, Betsy Tannenbaum sent you, huh? How come she didn't come herself? Out of town. These women were tortured and killed, just like the medical examiner's report says. But not in that order, perhaps. I don't follow. I'll speak slower. Hold this. In each of the women, there was a significant amount of phenobarbital present in the tissue. Painkiller? The level of the drugs was such that uh, these women were either dead when they were tortured or molested, or uh, they were completely unconscious. I don't get it. Whoever tortured these women didn't want them to feel anything. They didn't know what was happening to them. Good boy. But why? Unfortunately, autopsies can tell you what and how. You'll have to ask the killer to tell you why. How's the Big Apple? Oh, it's far from home and Kathy. I'm gonna see who I have to see and get back. Spoke to Keen. And what do you have? These ladies were drugged. What do you mean, drugged? Drugged! Before, they were tortured and killed. And they never felt a thing. It's a frame. You think? Well... Yeah, I mean, if their whole premise is that Darius slash Lake is a compulsive killer and the same guy is doing the killing, why would he change his M.O.? Uh, maybe he mellowed in his old age. Have you gotten a hold of Oberhurst yet? No, but uh, I've got his cell phone records. Oberhurst used his phone six days ago. And guess who he called? The initials are M.D. Well, that's not necessarily indicative of anything. No, not necessarily, but why would Oberhurst stop using his phone? Good work, Reggie. Keep looking, all right? And keep your cell phone on. You got it. Bye. Imagine being locked up in a barn for months, prisoner to a madman, suffering at his hands, indulging his demented urges, wallowing in filth without food or water to survive. No, she doesn't talk about it. Not to me, not to anyone, and I don't blame her. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. You mean your wife is alive? Well, she lived through it, but she's never been the same person. It's been 10 years now. That's hard to believe. She still has scars. I'm sorry your wife had to suffer so much. The irony of it is that she's the lucky one. How do you mean? She's here with people who love her. That's something the others can't say. The lake woman and her daughter, they were killed in their home. Patricia Cross, water's killed in the basement. Anne Hazelton killed herself three months later. And Samantha Reardon ended up in a mental hospital. I don't think she ever got out. So, so you're telling me more than one woman survived? Yes, I thought you knew. Thanks for your time, sir. Not at all. Oh, listen. How many people are coming to ask questions? More? Yes. You mean someone came to see you before me? Well, there was this really obnoxious fellow 
few weeks back, Oberhurst. I remember thinking he looked like an Oberhurst, that's how I remember. And today, there's this woman coming. I assumed that you were all working together. And no, we're not connected. Uh, the first guy, you said his name was Oberhurst with a B? That's right. What was the woman's name? Betsy Tannenbaum. I had a feeling I might see you here. Alan. Are you stalking me? I may have to get a restraining order. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Now, why would I do that? We call it early shared discovery of evidence. Admissible by both sides? All's fair. Deal. I'm glad we did this. Save us both a lot of time. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Can you imagine? Having to live through that ordeal, poor woman. What about the husband? That he stayed with her through it all. What, like it's her fault? A lot of men might not. Well, if you think like that, perhaps you don't know the right men. So, you're divorced. It shows, huh? You? I hope not. Why the ambivalence? Well, you make assumptions about marriage and the support that you will get, and you're disappointed when you don't get it. So why do you hang on to it? We have a daughter. She's six. Say no more. You have kids? We didn't have kids. She blames me for it. Why? We, uh, I put it off too long. My decision. I wanted to be more settled in my career. Didn't think I was ready. Suddenly it was too late. Can you take this from you? Okay. Yeah, you think you're going to be young forever. And then uh, suddenly, <laughs> past a certain age, with the things you could have done, figure out the things that are no longer possible. Can't have everything. Kathy, were you one of the kids that made her cry? Yes. You know better than that. Did you say you were sorry? No, but I will. Promise? Promise. Now, tomorrow, you go and you apologize to Jamie, okay? Okay. All right. Let me speak to Grandma. Here, Grandma. Thanks, Danny. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Mom, is everything okay? Fine. With you? No, it's all good here, Mom. Good. Be careful, Betsy. Okay, Mom, always. Good night. What do you think Senator Colby's personal imprint would be on the Supreme Court? Well, first and foremost, Senator Colby's a very fair man. He's also a very pragmatic man. So I think... His great strength is working with opposing viewpoints toward building a consensus. So I think it's possible on this court. It will have a humanistic sensibility. Look at this. Ten years ago, Senator Colby was the governor of New York State. Yeah, so? So, how does a small town cop become top aide to a governor, turn senator, turn justice of the Supreme Court nominee? You got me. But I don't see how it could possibly relate to the Black Rose murders. <sighs> we better go if we're gonna be written. Okay. I have no idea where my ex-wife is. And if you see her, don't tell her I said hi. What caused the divorce? Irreconcilable differences. She thought I looked better with a knife in my chest. I disagreed. I can see how that might be a source of friction. Did she ever name her abductor? Oh, well, she definitely called him a few names. Did she identify him? I know what you're getting at. Samantha was always edgy. Okay. And believe me, you did not want to set her off or go into you. But this thing that happened to her, I mean, it was so far above and beyond it. And when they found her, she had already long gone, totally bats. When they released her from the hospital is when she came at me with a knife. And it's a good thing I was facing her, too. I mean, I didn't want to press charges, so I had her institutionalized in a place about an hour from here. It's the uh, Sullivan Hospital. Our marriage was already under rocks at the time before this thing happened, so finally I divorced her. I heard she was transferred. And that's the last you heard from her? That's the last I heard from her. Yes. Well, not a lot here. Guess I'll just have to convict your client on what's back home. Well, then I guess I'll just have to get him acquitted on the same. It's 
so? So? I'm leaving you, Alan. Story of my life. Clyde, it's Alan. I need you to find me another woman. Another one? Oh, shut up. Yeah, get with John and log on to the medical database. We're looking for a Samantha Reardon. Um, start with an institution in New York called Sullivan Hospital and go from there. And what if I find her? Well, see if she'll talk to you about Hunter's Point or Peter Lake or her ordeal, anything. Sounds like a fun conversation. When are you coming home? Soon, I hope. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. May I help you? I'm here to see Wayne Turner. And your name, please? Betsy Tannenbaum. Do you have an appointment? No, I do not. Mr. Turner does not see anyone without an appointment. All right, then I'd like to make an appointment. And I'd like that appointment to be now. I'm sorry, but Mr. Turner is booked for the next three weeks. Is he in? <sighs> That's not any of your business. Yes, it is my business. Ask Mr. Turner who he'd rather answer questions from about the Black Rose murders in Hunter's Point. Me or CNN? Yes. Of course. Mr. Turner will see you now. Right this way, please. This is Danaba. Tannenbaum, I'm Wayne Turner. Mr. Turner, thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Sorry for the delay in seeing you. The truth is, we were discussing you. So you know who I am? Yes. You're defending Martin Darius, who was once known as Peter Lake. And we have a pretty good idea why you're here. Why am I here? Since you've come this far, we can only assume that you suspect Senator Colby and myself, as well as Frank Grimsbow, of allowing your client to get away with murder back when he was known as Peter Lake. Well, I do find it rather curious that two of the three investigators on the case have done so extraordinarily well for themselves in the past 10 years. Mr. Grimsbow was less than helpful. But I hadn't suspected either of you of anything. Certainly not Senator Colby. But since you mention it, did you? Yes, we did. Along with Chief of Police John O'Malley and Detective Nancy Gordon. Peter Lake paid you all off. Peter Lake's money didn't buy him anything. That's not what happened. What did happen? I am not free to say. Senator, I believe you're being deliberately oblique. Well, if I am, it's out of necessity. Something's being covered up. And I won't stop until I find out what it is. Mrs. Tannenbaum, wait. Do you believe you will be able to get Martin Darius freed of these charges? I'm convinced that my client will be acquitted of the charges against him. Sit. How about we just tell you the truth? Peter Lake tried to kill her. The case was closed. But Nancy refused to let it go. She told Lake she knew it was him. Told him everything we had, the entire case we built against him before Waters took the fall. She told him that the rest of us had moved on and that he'd gotten away with murder. See, she thought she knew Lake and that if he thought he was free, he might come after her, tie up his loose ends. You got what you wanted. 
not get out. I'm warning you. She knew I'm all right. She set him up. You're warning me. Get out of my house. Oh, Nance. It isn't what you used to say. Let's go. Wait, he's talking. They had to go. What about those other women? Have you ever had complete control over a person? Ugh. It's... Whoa, there's nothing like it. I've always admired people who had that. My own private inquisition. They begged to please me. It was... delicious. He was out of waters. Yeah. I left the silhouette at his house. I mean, an actual black rose would be obvious, but silhouette? I knew you guys would buy that. Just like you'll buy this. Nancy, don't do it. No, Frank, no! Come on, we got him, we got him. Let's shoot him, Nancy. Hey, we'll write the thing. We'll see it malfunction to shoot him. No! Are you two out of your minds? No! You can't touch me. Nobody touches me. Oh, yeah. They're alive. The other three women. They're alive. <laughs> Governor, I'm John O'Malley, Chief of Police. Chief, this is Larry Merrill. He's assistant to the Attorney General. How do you do? What the hell's going on here? We need to talk. He wants a full pardon from any and all crime he's committed in New York State. He wants complete immunity from federal prosecution for civil rights violations. And to top it off, he wants a guarantee from the state of New York will pay any civil judgments and attorney fees that arise from the case. He wants you to put it all in writing and on videotape, or he's going to let the women starve to death. How do we know they're alive? He'll give us their location after he's got the document and the videotape. If any of them are dead, deal's void. Why can't you find them? We've been trying to find them. I mean, we want them back alive. It's your call, Governor. All right. Give him what he wants. Once he shows us where the women are, I'll lock him up again. A contract made under duress won't stand up. It might. What do you mean, it might? When I was with the U.S. Attorney, we routinely gave immunity to mobs as an exchange for the testimony. The contract principles apply, but so does due process. Both sides enter into this agreement in good faith, and the defendant performs. The courts will enforce the agreement. You enter this with your eyes open. That'll stick. Under the circumstances, I would do it again.
each had to live with it. In our own way. Obviously, if this is made public, it ruins my confirmation chances. But that's all right. Truth must be foremost. Especially for a fellow who wants to become the next justice on the Supreme Court, don't you think? You had no choice. Oh, we all have a choice, Mrs. Tannenbaum. It's just that some are easier to make than others. Betsy, I've been looking for you. Come on in. There's no need. I'm resigning as your counsel. I'll be sending the files to your office, and I will return the balance of your retainer by the end of the week. Never figured you for a quitter. Don't tell me I had you pegged wrong. I've been to Hunter's Point. I've talked to some people who know you quite well. Some former detectives, Grimsbo and Turner. I even spoke to Senator Colby. I know everything, Martin. I know you murdered your wife and daughter. I know about the women in that barn. I know about the satanic deal you made. And you know about the gag order. I couldn't talk to you about it. Of course I know about the gag order. At this point, you think I really care about a gag order? You're a monster. So was Greg. Said you'd defend him. You murdered your wife and your daughter and Patricia Cross. You did terrible things to those women in that barn. You framed an innocent man for it and got him killed and you're... I was guilty in that case, but I'm not being tried for that case. And you didn't sign on to work it. Maybe I don't have a conscience. The question is, do you? You stay away from me. I'm telling you the truth. I did not kill these women in Sacramento. Now listen to me. Just listen to me. Whoever is framing me knows the case against me is weak. Otherwise, how could I get out on bail? Now, they're going to have to get more evidence against me, and they're going to have to kill again to get that evidence. I'm asking you to help me so no one else has to die. I am no longer your attorney, and I no longer work for you. Talk to Nancy Gordon. She's the one. Find Nancy Gordon. Nancy G. 
She's showing up in my dreams, but nowhere else. What about Samantha? We're, not... We're working on it. Oh, come on, guys. I am bleeding to death here, and you can't even give me a Band-Aid. Well, I found the other guy, the detective you're looking for. Great. Where is he? What? In the morgue. He'd been in the woods for a week outside his cabin. Indigenous fauna had been working on him. Accident, suicide, homicide, what? No, it was definitely a homicide. You could tell. There were marks on his throat and... Uh, his little finger had been chopped off. Really? A watch was stuffed down his throat. That sounds like a mob hit. In Sacramento? Any chance it was Darius? If Overhurst was in Hunter's Point, that means he knew that Darius was Peter Lake. It's worth looking into. It'd be sweet if we could pin this one on the diabolical Mr. D, too, huh? It would certainly make my day. What? You've got that look. Why didn't Nancy Gordon tell us about the survivors at Hunter's Point? You know, she's trying to make Darius look bad. By having him be the murderer of more people, he's worse. What are you saying? She's framing him? Then why wouldn't she show up in court? She's half our case. Maybe her story wouldn't hold up in court. Certainly not without her to tell it. Now back up a little bit. If, if the Hunter's Point cops killed the pervert, how'd they find the other bodies? Escalante's not clear about that. He thought someone just came upon it accidentally. But when exactly? After Waters was killed? How'd the other women not starve to death? According to Escalante, they almost did. Look, guys, we have to make something happen here, or we are going to get our asses handed to us again. Good morning, ladies. I'm looking for Kitty Nimble. I'm Kitty Nimble. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm Reggie Stewart, private investigator. I'm looking for one of your tenants, uh, Samantha Reardon. <laughs> Samantha was okay. Kind of quiet. Nice-looking lady. But I'm bent that way, God knows. So, um, how old do you know her? Mm. Better than some, not as well as others. Like I said, she kept to herself. She seemed like someone who wanted to keep it under control. Uh, uh, no, thanks. No? Nope. Guess that's why they let her out. <laughs> they always give me a little profile on them. Three institutions in eight years. Hmm. You'd never know by looking at her. <sighs> Not like some of them, right? You wouldn't, um, happen to have a picture of her. And why would I have her picture? Uh, just to make my life easier. That's what Scotch is for. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think Samantha left behind were books. Books? What kind of books? Medical type books. Said she used to be a nurse. Said she wanted to do it again. Um... Would you mind if I see? Hey, Counselor. Oh. Hey, Nora. Haven't heard from you in a while. Thought I'd just drop by and see what's going on with the case. No, I'm off the case. Really? Yes, I'm no longer representing Darius. Well, I mean, what about the article? What about our, our story? Nora, write whatever you want. I don't care. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. Sure, I'll call you when I'm finished. Okay. Hello, office. Guess who? Oh, Red right I'm glad it's you. I got the scoop on Samantha Reardon. The lady went through like three different mental hospitals before she was released into some halfway house a little over a year ago. I mean, whatever was making her nuts ain't anymore. Reggie. No, no, wait, 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 wait. So, I spoke to the lady who runs the place, right? Reardon left about five months ago. She became invisible, a ghost, poof, vanished right off the face of the earth. But here's the really interesting part. She leaves behind all these books, you know, uh, medical texts and, and stuff like that. And she's got all these pages highlighted about drugs and, and poison. You know, that's, that's good for us, right? Especially after what Dr. Keene said, you know, all those ladies being drugged and all. Reggie, we're off the case. <clears throat> Say what? I found some things out about Darius that I didn't like. I resigned from the case this morning. You're kidding, right? Forget about Samantha Rear. Don't worry, Reggie. I'll, I'll pay you the balances. Enough to go there. That's not what I was talking about. Reggie, thank you. Sure. Hello? Lisa? Lisa, Artie called. 
I told him we'd meet him at the club for dinner tonight. Okay? So if we leave it about... This ridiculous trial is going to have to be my focus for the next few months. So I've reached an agreement with my partners to fold our companies together. Your contracts and the contracts of all the employees will be honored. I'm taking a certain cash assignment. doesn't have a familiar ring. You are under arrest. For what? You have the right For to what? remain silent. For what? Anything For the murder of Lisa Darius. Save the sales pitch for someone who's buying. You have the right to an attorney. You think I killed my own wife? If you cannot afford it, you will be appointed to you by the court. I'm Nora Sloan. We, we talked earlier about doing the interview for your wife. Now? That was in the neighborhood. I thought we might as well get it out of the way. Well, I, I just put my daughter to bed. It's kind of a bad time. You know, it'll just take a couple of minutes. I'll be quiet as a mouse, I promise. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Uh, I appreciate it. Can I get you anything to drink? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, what do you have? You got uh, sodas, uh, juices, water? Lemonade, you know, basic stuff. What are you doing? Else in the house. All right, Betsy, Betsy, I'm sorry. I can't let you up there. It's an active crime scene. Look at me. Look at me. All right? Your husband walked into a burglary. They must have taken her. We'll put out an amber alert. Officer, I need that to happen right now. No, I know. It's Darius. Darius. It's not Darius. Yes, yes, listen to me. It's Darius. I went to 
today. Betsy, Dad, listen what? to me. It's not Darius. We arrested him this afternoon for the murder of his wife. He is in custody. I swear to you, we will find her. Psychology sent over. It's, it's standard in a situation like this. No. No, please don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be fine. Okay. Betsy, I wish there was something more I could do. Something more I could say. Thank you. We will find your daughter. I swear to you. I'm gonna stay on top of this, and I'll let you know as soon as there's word. Any word. <laughs> Drink your milk, honey. It'll make your mama happy. Yeah. I've got your daughter. husband thing. But I need it, Kathy. It was the only way that I could get her. Oh, good God. She's fine. But we've got to start working together, Betsy, because we're running out of time. And there's only so much I can do by myself. Oh, my God. What are you talking about? Peter Lake. I've practically laid him in your lap. But if you don't help me, he's going to get away again. And that, that wouldn't be so good for Kathy. Oh, you're Samantha Reardon. I was. Until he came. And then everything changed. They locked me up with crazy people, Betsy. But he got to live his life as though nothing had happened. But something had happened. And I was the only one who cared. But now, now I can look at them. And I can see that you care too. I, I had everything under control until that Nancy Gordon showed up. See, I have plans for Peter. Very specific, delicious plans. She would have ruined those plans. She would have exposed me. I want you back on this case. I want you to lose it, and I want that as much as you want, Kathy. Don't hurt her. Well, that's entirely up to you, Betsy. Nancy Gordon told me all about insurance policies, and Kathy's mine, just like I was Peter's. But don't worry. I'm one of the good guys, honey. Everything will be fine as long as you do exactly what I say.
Nora Sloan or Samantha Reardon or Black Roses. Find anything, Reggie. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I guess it's worth a try. Let's try it. All right. See if you can find anything to do with gone but not forgotten reference. Okay. Thank you. I'll give you a call. Darius's attorney, Betsy Tannenbaum. Who are you? No, Betsy, James Lee, public defender. Have you signed agreement to represent Mr. Darius? Unless you have a document which rescinds it, I'm his lawyer. Fine. You want him? He's yours. Presenting Darius. What did he say to you? Nothing. It's fine. Is there something I have to do? No, this is not something. Is there something I must trust me. Session, the Honorable Judge Theo Marks presiding. You may be seated. Mrs. Tannerbaum, the court and I personally wish to extend our deepest sympathies to you on your recent loss. Thank you, sir. Now, if you're here, I'm presuming you're ready to proceed with this case. I am, Your Honor. Are you okay? What does he mean, boss? What, what happened? What are you losing? Martin, please. I cannot talk to you about this. What, what's he talking about? Fine. The people wish to arraign Mr. Darius on an additional charge? It's correct, Your Honor. And that charge is? An additional count of murder in the first degree. The people hold that Martin Darius did willfully and with malice of forethought kill his wife, Lisa Darius, on the day of September 18th. Is there evidence that the prosecution would like to enter at this time? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> to enter a sworn statement from Lisa Darius's father, Judge Michael Ryder, pursuant to the defendant's treatment of his wife. accept the statement. I also wish to enter a sworn affidavit from Senator Raymond Colby, United States Supreme Court Justice nominee regarding a set of cases. You gave him a call and I swear to God, I mean, order. Your Honor, 
like to request that Ms. Tannenbaum be removed as my counsel. She's not acting in my best interest. She's in moral breach of her duties. Your Honor, please, I beg the indulgence of the court to please give me a moment alone with my client in the jury room. If the prosecution has no objection. No objection, Your Honor. Bailiff, see to it that Mrs. Tannenbaum has privacy in the jury room. Believe me, I never gave Colby to Alan Page. I don't believe you. Not a single word. Empty your pockets, please. Well, they were empty. I was just here a minute ago. I'm sorry. We have to do this again. Uh, okay. Please open your belt. kill you both. Don't come in! There's a woman with a gun and she will kill both of us if you come in! Did I hurt you, Peter? Oh. Oh. The soul, my pain is cleansed again. The mind, my pain made one. My nightmare made one. Stop, so hard for this one, Peter. I really don't want to rush it. And if I recall correctly, you're the kind of man who likes to take his time. I want to tell you what I have planned. I want to let you be able to anticipate the fun. You know, like I had to do. Nancy! 
Kathy, are you all right? Keep them out if you ever want to see Kathy again. Helen, keep everyone away from the door. It's Samantha Reardon, and she's got Kathy hostage somewhere. Please keep everyone away from the door. All right, back off. Everybody back off. Go the hallway now. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to kill you. No, I, I have something much more enlightening in mind for you. You see, it's right here. This little cocktail. Made it just for you. I started with a shot of thiodine glycol to paralyze you. Followed up with a just a little touch of cyanogen chloride, which will set your blood on fire. And a little bit of meth to act as an accelerator. The net result's a little bit difficult to describe, but I, I think the words unremitting, excruciating pain come pretty close. You'll be burning inside, but you won't be able to move or even cry out. I particularly like that touch. Well, my very favorite part is that it'll be permanent. You won't be in control of anything or anyone ever again, including yourself. That's one thing I learned from you, Peter, is it's all about control. Betsy, tell me you're all right or I'm coming in. No, no, don't, please, don't, please. Don't, please. Don't, please. <laughs> Control, Peter. Betsy, come on. Come on. says that in a few hours she will be fine. Just fine. What do you mean? Oh, God. <laughs> He's Mr. Prosecutor. Great work. Thanks. Um, I also found that other witness you were looking for, Nancy Gordon. She... Thank you. Sure. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> See you one last time. I'm told there's nothing wrong with your brain. You can hear and you can see, but most importantly, you can think. So think about this.
life is all about choices. The ones you made put you here. I hope you'll come to understand that. Stay tuned. Next on True Entertainment. Everything she ever wanted. Part 1. Alternatively on True Movies 1. Trail of Tears. And on True Movies 2. Inspector Nardoni.